YouTube, it's Faye, and for today's video, I have this oil pump. This is not how it came from the factory, so I'm going to show you in this video how this oil pump came to look like this, or at least this pickup. Okay, here we go. Whoops, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here. <laughs> Before I show you how I start cutting this thing into pieces, let me first show you the inspiration that started this entire project. Yes, That's a pickup screen for a 440 Chrysler. Which is huge. And that one. And this is a Moroso one, high dollar Moroso one. So that's a really and nice one. And you can tell yep. that it actually will allow you to, to get down to the bottom of the pan. We don't want it down to the bottom of the pan to, to pick up all the, all the trash. Right. We want it up from there, but we want it pretty close, a quarter inch, a little, a little bit higher than, than a quarter inch. And then it can actually run the oil level down all the way to there. Not that I'm going to do that, that but in case I take a hard yeah. corner or something. Yeah, if you're, if you're <laughs> drifting and stuff. All right, so here we go and back to the grinder. And in order to make this oil pump pick up like the Moroso one, I'm first gonna start by removing the screen. The reason why I'm removing the screen is because there is this weird tube that goes right down into the center of the oil pump pickup. And if I was to just extend the outer edge and make it sort of the same idea as the Moroso one, then if my oil pan starts out empty with oil, which it's going to because the engine's new, and then I fill the oil pan full of oil, there's gonna be an air bubble caught between the outside edges and that center tube. So I'm removing the screen to grind down the tube. All right, let's get to it. Ta-da, screen off, tube removed now. And I'm just gonna go back through and remove all of the coating with this wire wheel here, just so that when Danny goes into weld, yes, Danny, not me. I'm not a very good welder. I mean, I'm okay, but Danny's much better. And in order to not melt the heck out of this little screen here, uh, I need some a little bit of experience. So now I'm gonna go in and just do a quick test fit and sort of estimate how much pipe I'm gonna have to cut off to make the outer ring section of this oil pump pick up. So I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna overestimate. I'm gonna cut a little bit more than I need. I can always grind it down later after I do the final measurement. There we go. Hi, Danny. Hello. <laughs> What's that? Moranic acid. Oh. Removing the galvanization. Whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> it looks about cooked. Yeah, it's delicious. And the galvanizing is actually embedded in it. When they galvanize something, it's a chemical treatment that actually gets embedded in it. But this way, now we can see it's, it's not bubbling anymore. Oh, yeah. So we oh, much, yeah. Um, we're done. Yeah. And we're doing this so that you can weld it for me. Yes. We yes. Can, uh, modified oil, oil pickup. But now you can see it's the pipe before it got galvanized. Galvanized, yeah. It's like fresh metal. Try to make it flatter. Oh, yeah, definitely. Def, duh. Well, who do you think I am? Of course, you wouldn't just put on a belt sander like any other normal person. And I just thought, well, why? <laughs> this is nice and square. So by square, I mean to the same size everywhere. Yeah. Oh. Looks pretty close to round. Yeah, it looks pretty close. It, it does have a windage. This is a windage, not a baffle. Correct. So, so this is the windage, which is cool. All the oil stays down here at the bottom and, and off the crankshaft. If you accelerate really hard and decelerate, if you look at it, it'll go up in here, right. but it won't come back up in here. So it keeps all where it needs to be yeah. down here. And so, so this is cool. This lovely, this lovely magnetic dream plug that will hopefully grab all the uh, a Anything all the down there will, yeah, go, will go over there. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm hoping. Because this will actually be probably something like that. Yeah. So exactly. it'll actually be really, really cool. It's going to be wonderful. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if we were to squeeze this, the circle part, it, the, the circle part, it'd probably be volume-wise, you know, square footage or whatever, any square footage, any footage, <laughs> whatever, would probably be pretty dang close. Yeah, and, and that's for a much larger engine. I wonder what the tube diameter is as well. I think I oh, got a you, bigger tube. Yeah, oh, think, Toyota's killing it. <laughs> yeah. So this is a, uh, a Toyota 7M, and this is a 440 Dodge race motor. Oh, so okay. So you can see. There, the volume is there, and we're actually... Is this also a low-pressure, high-volume system? This is that? a high-pressure, high-volume. Oh. This is a race motor, yeah. Oh, okay. High-pressure, yeah. high-volume. Yeah. Real high-pressure, high real high-volume. And a 440 Chrysler spinning up high RPMs, that's sufficient. This is a Moroso piece. This is a nice piece. This isn't a factory piece. And then you see what, what, what we have over here, and actually really cool you know we're not going to be there's no way we're going to starve this motor and it wasn't coincidence that the the design shape you know there's no coincidence about yeah. it pretty cool yeah so putting that on here we're actually going to have better than this 
right? And we look at the size. This Absolutely. Is, and this yeah. just fits perfectly because so many people have been asking me like, what upgrades am I going to do to make sure that the factory 7M is like still good? And, uh, and this is one of them because we all hear that like rod knock is really common in the 7M for whatever reason. Uh, I don't know, probably, probably because people just run low on oil, but uh, this is going to, this is going to help prevent that from, from happening. So this is, this is good. No. Wait, what, how did you put a magnet in there? Put a magnet in it. Oh, that's brilliant. Here we are. Okay. Now you bring it back up. I think that's going to be good, right? Oh, that's, that, that's, that's, that's excellent. That's what I would be, if I were going to build a custom one, that's about the spacing that, that we want. So all that I did was I just cut along the outside edge here. Uh, this is a... Uh, this Sharpie is where the pipe fit perfectly. And uh, yeah, so I made a line, gave a little bit of a lip there because Danny's gonna do some welding. And then of course I sanded down all the burrs and removed the galvanized portion from the outside where he's gonna be doing some welding. So yeah, now I got this handled. Oh my God, that is the world's smallest weld. Yeah, <laughs> that's silicon bronze, so it's gonna work. This is a lot thicker than the mesh. Yeah. So I was afraid, you know, getting that, the mesh was going to just disintegrate. But as you saw from the very beginning when I first showed you this oil pump, the mesh did not disintegrate at all. Danny did a perfect job and I'm so stoked on it. So now I'm going to go install it. And thank you guys so much for watching my weird little Saturday project video. And I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye. And one last thing, P.S., before I hop into the grand finale, I, I know one of y'all is going to say it. Probably a lot of y'all are going to say it, so uh, let me just address this. I did shim the oil pump five millimeters five years ago. I got it, y'all. Don't worry. I got it, y'all. Don't worry. So hopefully y'all can sleep at night. Thanks for watching. Bye. See that again?